Hello and welcome to my review of Inertial Drift. All the gameplay in this video was captured on a PlayStation 5 console, but the game's also available for PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, Nintendo Switch and PC. Also, I need to let you know that a review code was provided to me by the publisher. Remember, if you enjoy this video or find it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel. So what is Inertial Drift? Well, it's an arcade racing game that asks players to rethink the genre by introducing its unique twin-stick controls. The game itself has actually been out since September 2020, but the developers have recently released a new roadmap of extra content. And to promote that new content, the publishers gave out some review codes to creators to show off the game and perhaps bring in some new players. The game includes the standard modes you'd expect to see, such as a story mode, challenges, arcade races, a Grand Prix, and both online and offline multiplayer. The story mode follows a group of characters who are preparing for the Summer Grand Prix. You'll be able to choose which character you want to play as, and they all drive different cars. You can't actually pair any character with any car, but each character has their own story mode to play through, and each car handles differently. The challenge mode tasks you with completing a variety of races with different modifiers, and you'll unlock new cars to use when you do. The arcade mode is pretty simple and has you setting up custom races with your choice of cars and track in order to set the best times and scores possible. The Grand Prix mode requires you to complete five difficult challenges which is supposed to show your mastery over a specific car. Within these various modes you'll have a few different types of races to complete. These are things like time trials, ghost battles, style races and duels. Time trials are exactly what they say they are, you try to beat a specific time on a specific track. Ghost battles have you racing against an AI controlled ghost car. Style races are a bit different and require you to really hit the right lines and not hit the barriers. You gain points for longer drifts and racing really close to the barriers, but if you crash into it, it invalidates some of your points. Duels are essentially a battle against an actual NPC character, and as you race, you'll gain points for being in first place. So the aim of the game is to really stay ahead as much as possible to earn more points, and then once you reach the points threshold, you'll be declared the winner. Now, of course, this all sounds pretty normal for an arcade racing game, but it's this game's controls that really set it aside from virtually all other racing games, arcade or otherwise. Every single car in the game handles somewhat differently, with some of them initially seeming impossible to control. The default car that you use during the tutorial really does help you to understand the basics though. Inertial Drift uses a twin stick system for turning and drifting. You accelerate with the right trigger and brake with the left trigger, but if you try to play this like any other racing game, you won't get very far at all. When using the left stick only, you'll notice that you can barely turn at all, and you'll have absolutely no hope of getting around certain corners. This is where the right stick comes in. That stick essentially governs the angle of your car, so if you're going around a corner to the right, let's say, you'll need to push both sticks to the right to start drifting. And after a while, you'll start to get a feel for the nuance and the accuracy that this system provides to the player. The right stick actually works on a gradient, so it's not just a case of I'm turning left so press left on both sticks. Some turns are sharper than others and of course some are wider, but you can actually adjust the angle of your car on the fly while drifting in order to adapt to any corner that you're facing. This isn't very easy at first, but after a while you'll start to get the hang of it. This is a pretty small and inexpensive game, so by this point you should have a very good idea of what the game has to offer and what to expect. So let's move on to my personal opinion, starting with with the positives. Please do remember that this isn't an exhaustive list by any means, it's just a few things that stood out to me, and the same is true for the negative section. So the very first thing that I noticed was the cell-shaded car models. They all look very clean, very bright, very detailed, and every single one is unique. Its visual style really reminds me of an older arcade racer on the PS2, GameCube, and the original Xbox called Auto Modelista, which originally released in 2002. I mean, fair enough, it didn't have the twin-stick controls and was a bit more realistic, at least as far as handling goes, but it definitely had a similar look. The environments themselves and the tracks are also presented in a cell-shaded style, and overall, I think it's a very good-looking game. It's not exactly very impressive on a technical level, but this art style is very good at covering up graphical shortcomings, and I think it works really well here. Not to mention that the game ran absolutely flawlessly the entire time that I played it. And of course, I also found the twin-stick control system to be very enjoyable to use after I'd had some time to get used to it. I literally just reviewed two other arcade racing games before this one, and going from them to this was pretty jarring at first. 
but you know, after a few races I did start to pick it up and got much more comfortable with how it works. The game really wants and demands that you play in a certain way, and once you take the time to learn it, it really does pay off in the end. And by the time I'd finished the game, I was much better at it than some of the footage would suggest. I was able to easily take all but the most difficult corners with ease, and was really having a lot of fun doing so. Some of the other cars that I tried felt absolutely horrendous to use after getting used to the initial one, but again, if you respect and understand what the game wants from you, you will improve over time. It may be kind of frustrating for a while, but the overall feeling of perfectly drifting around every corner of a given track is well worth the effort, at least in my opinion. And so that about covers my main positive points, the ones that stood out to me, so it's probably a good time to move on to the negatives. And so the first negative point for me was that the races can feel kind of barren and a bit lifeless. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically the driving and drifting is really fun and enjoyable to do. You get a great sense of speed and perfecting certain corners on a track is a really nice feeling. The problem for me is that while all of that's great, you only ever race against a ghost or perhaps one other NPC and there really aren't that many tracks in the game. I was personally hoping for some larger and more detailed tracks with maybe seven other cars in the same race, but that's just not what this game's about. Pretty much all of the races and race types feel very lonely, although I believe this was kind of done by design. The game seems very much based around track times and having the perfect run on each of those tracks. It doesn't really seem like the developers were going for a, you know, type of race that I wanted, and I suppose that's fine. It's not like they were making the game for me specifically, and perhaps it may have interfered with the drifting mechanics to have that many cars in a single race. I, you know, I really don't know, but either way, I would have liked to have seen it in included if it was possible. And the only other main negative for me was something that I felt was basically missing. All 16 of the vehicles in the base game only have one kind of customization, which is their overall color. That's literally it. You can't upgrade their performance, swap parts, change body kits, or apply decals or anything like that. I would have really loved it if the cars all started off fairly weak, and as you play you can level them up, or perhaps purchase things like new tires or exhausts, you know, stuff like that, that would improve their stats. It would have been great to pick up a basic car and then upgrade it with cool body kits and spoilers and things like that, but unfortunately Unfortunately, each car just is what it is. Even if there was just a large amount of visual customization and it was all just, you know, cosmetic and didn't actually make a difference to the handling of the cars, that would have helped things for me. I mean, sure, I understand that the game's made by a small team, it's not exactly a huge game, and it is very inexpensive to purchase, but having these small things would have really helped to keep people engaged and keep them playing, at least in my case. And with that said, that's my main negatives out of the way, so let's move on to the conclusion and recommendation section. Inertial Drift is a small game with big ideas, and if you're willing to take the time to learn what it wants from you, it can definitely be quite rewarding. The game is far more about lap times and chasing that perfect run on each track than it is about placing first in a race filled with other cars. I said this in my Hot Wheels Unleashed review, but unfortunately time trials have never really been my thing in racing games. They represent the mode that I least like to engage with, but having said that, the game's unique drifting mechanics made the experience quite interesting for me. These mechanics allowed me to almost ignore the fact that most of the game is time trials or something similar at least, and focus on the driving and drifting. I was never actively chasing the best time, I was simply learning how to control my car and having fun doing it. Luckily, doing exactly that is what helped me pass the time trials that I wasn't fond of. And so ultimately, considering the low entry price, its unique twin stick drifting, and the fact that there's new content on the way, I think this game is pretty easy to recommend to any arcade racing fan, I really do. However, you do need to go into it knowing what you're getting. This game doesn't play like any arcade racer you've seen before, and you will need to adapt to it. I know a lot of racing fans out there do actually enjoy time trials and beating lap records, so if that appeals to you, just know that this game has a lot of that. The game overall is simple. It wants you to find a car that handles in a way you click with and then master it. I think if you stick with the game, learn how everything works, and enjoy the way it feels to play, you'll end up being surprised at just how rewarding it can be. And so there you go, that's my review of Inertial Drift. It's available right now for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series consoles, Nintendo Switch, and PC. 
The developers have just added a 17th car, and the new content will start rolling out soon into 2022. If you have any questions about the game, perhaps something I may have missed, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, I hope today will be the day that I earn your subscription, and if you want to support the channel even further, all the important links are in the video description down below. But with all that said, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.